welcome to another episode of Monday, Monday Afternoon, afternoon Theologian. Uh, I hear noise. That's a good sign. <laughs> We've had many people overcoming the obstacles of highway slalom. It's a new event right after the Olympics where they're trying to dodge potholes. Uh huh. We've seen a lot of pothole dodgery in this last couple of days. Yeah, there was a meme in our local something that said, now available, three bedroom, two bath pothole on Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, complete with running water. Yeah, or well, at least dripping water. Right. Our Michigan Department of Transportation, aka MDOT, has a fatalistic philosophy. It's fatalistic universalism. All roads lead to potholes. <laughs> it's kind of a theological concept. I thought it fit here on this channel. Um, I'm not sure that that's accurate because one time when we were going to California to support a friend of mine who was going to be auditioning for one of the military bands out there, we got lost in the fog and wound up on a service road instead of the entrance to the freeway. And we thought, well, maybe if we parallel the freeway, we'll come up on another entrance. And instead we wound up in somebody's driveway. <laughs> and somebody else said, but I thought all roads led to California. And somebody else said, I don't think that's the way roads work. No, it's not the way roads work. <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, the time I missed my exit in the outskirts of Philadelphia and the main freeway that runs into Philadelphia has very few places where you can actually get off. Uh -huh. And when I was able to get off, I was in a really bad neighborhood mm. and found a quickie mart and asked the guy, how do I get back on? And he said, well, first get in your car, lock your doors, <laughs> then take this road to here. You'll get on the freeway going the other way in about so many miles, then you're going to take a right. There's a big sign. This time you can't miss it. Did you finally yeah. get back on again? I guess you did because you're here today. That's right. I, I wasn't killed. <laughs> so I understand you've been working on your tile project. Is that correct? I have. I've spent probably the last three weeks, a few hours here, a few hours there. Several years ago, we had somebody frame it and put the sheetrock on it. Mm -hmm. And a few years after that, we actually got the tile. Mm -hmm. But it's been sitting on the floor in the master bedroom for literally years. <laughs> and finally, we got all the pieces together and the goo that we needed to make the tile stick to the wall. It uh, was finished this morning about 8.30 or so. Yeah, Very my good. wife just came back from a doctor's appointment to see it finished. Mm -hmm. And she kind of squealed with delight because she is so happy to have that project done. Yay! I bet. Fellow theologians, I think that we should all applaud Rick on enduring and persevering and overcoming obstacles to get his tile project. Let's give him a golf clap now, shall we? Excellent job. Much appreciated. And what a nice segue right into our topic for today. Oh, endurance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And perseverance. Why don't we get into looking at endurance and the differences and similarities between endurance and perseverance? Because there are some nuances there. Um, what would be a good definition, do you think, to get us into talking about endurance, first of all? Endurance has a long duration. I believe they have the same root word. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of effort to get from point A to point B. Whereas perseverance in my mind, usually has some obstacles to overcome along the way. So they're similar, but endurance is you just keep plodding along and eventually you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Perseverance, you're going to have to overcome some stuff that you may not have uh, anticipated when you started the process. I see. So what came to my mind to illustrate that is that endurance is the tortoise versus the hare. And the tortoise just keeps going. And because of that persistence, that endurance over a long period of time, he does eventually finish the race. And then on the other side of that, you might have something like uh, an obstacle course that we used to have to go through in physical education in junior high and high school. 
and there are obstacles that get into your way and you have to make your way over or around or under them in order to continue that endurance. And so it's a little more proactive and overcoming things along the way, not just enduring for a long period of time, but overcoming. Is that close to illustrating what you're talking about? Oh, absolutely. And uh, there are folks who are making an entire industry out of it. I mean, there are all sorts of different television programs all around the world with these absolutely bizarre <laughs> obstacle courses that are almost unfinishable. Yeah. And people run them and hundreds of people watch and they film mm -hmm. it and then they broadcast it. So everyone around the world can see these people fall on their face uh -huh. or into the of, muck. Yep. There's a lot of splatting that goes on in some of those. <laughs> Almost like what could have happened in my trip to the mailbox last week, but didn't, fortunately. I only wound up on one knee in snow and not in a mud hole, so that was good. That was good. It's so easy to quit and to just give up in either of those instances. And I think sometimes things just feel bigger than they are, or they feel overwhelming, and we think, I just don't have the strength, either physical strength, as in some of those physical challenges that you referenced, or emotional or mental strength. I just don't have the want to anymore. And so it's easy to give up and just quit the race, so to speak. I remember as a kid going out into my front yard, which wasn't all that big. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. And you know, in those little tract homes in West Phoenix, they weren't huge. Not like some of these gigantic two acre yards in Michigan where people have to get on their tractors to mow them. But we had a couple of trees which means that there weren't that many leaves. But as a young boy, it feels like a field of three acres that you're trying to rake up. And I just felt like I can't do it. I can't finish raking the yard. But I got enough extra energy when my dad walked out with another rake. And he said, let's do this together. Maybe that'll help. And just to have one other person come up next to me and start doing the same thing made me think, oh, okay, well, if he's going to do it with me, I think maybe we can do this. And that stuck with me. I was probably, I don't know, seven years old or something. Some things can be a big boost to your energy to help you persevere so that you don't give up and you don't quit. I was thinking of a story I heard in a church years and years ago. It was about some missionaries, but the missionaries had been working for a very long time in their mission field and had seen no results. Yeah. Just the, it was like they were talking to themselves. And one day the pastor was praying and the Lord told him, preach on the begats. So-and-so <laughs> begat, so-and-so, so-and-so begat, so-and-so. And he thought, you've got to be kidding. I must have misheard that. Right. And so he prayed some more and the same message came through. And so he wanted to be faithful. So that next uh, sermon he put together, uh, a sermon on so and so had a son whose name was this and that son had another son named this and on and on it went and they saw many people come to the lord for the first time and he was absolutely flabbergasted he said i can't even imagine that this passage would be that powerful and when he talked to one of the the church people there he said what was it about this that made such a big difference and he said, before, it seemed like you were telling us stories. And this was about real people and real people who were impacted by God. And that made a difference because of our perspective. You know, our, our sociology made it such that we could understand better when it was about people who were real and who were living and had seen God work in their lives. And who would have thought? But I guess that just tells us that every part of the Word of God is inspired and able to send forth God's message. That's a great story. And, and it does illustrate that sometimes things that don't seem like they make much sense to us, especially when God is the one telling us that we should do it. <laughs> if he's telling us to do it, man, we ought to do it because he sure knows what he's doing. That's great. I was thinking about some other things that kind of illustrate what endurance is and what might perseverance be. And I mean, we just finished the Olympics a couple of days ago at the time of this recording. Mm -hmm. And I watched some of the highlights. And one of them was from a 50 kilometer cross country ski event. Okay, so that's somewhere around 30 miles for those of us who are metrically illiterate. <laughs> 
And I was thinking, first of all, who's the guy who thought, hey, I have an idea. You know how we strap boards to our feet and then we go downhill? Well, let's do that. But about half the time, we're going to go uphill. <laughs> so they're going uphill, they're going downhill, uphill, downhill for 50 kilometers. And it takes hours. And they're struggling and they're fighting not only against the elements, against the terrain, against the other competitors, and their own mind and their own strength for mm -hmm. hours to compete in this race that goes on and on and on. And that just takes endurance. Wow. No kidding. <laughs> I'm thinking back to only a year ago when we were hoping when we first entered our lockdown phase back in March of 2020, some of us were thinking, ah, we'll be out of this in six weeks. And then we extended it and said, maybe 12, well, maybe half a year. And it was a year and things were still locked down in many places, especially in our state. We still couldn't get back into a building to start worshiping. Things were rough. And I was taking long walks every day. And I, I started wondering, God, am I just about done in this role, in this job? I don't think of anything else that I can be doing right now. I'm doing everything humanly possible to guide a church, and I can't see what's going to happen next. We're shrinking in size. People are leaving to go to other churches that have buildings. I don't know what to do. And he, somehow he kept sending the right people alongside me to encourage me at just the right moment to say, you just keep doing the last thing God told you to do, and he'll see you through it. He'll let you know when your job is done. But man, I was ready to get a job as a Walmart greeter. <laughs> no offense to Walmart greeters. I mean, I'm sure that they serve a vital function, but you know what I'm saying? I, I just thought I need to get a real job because this ministry stuff is for the birds right now. And I'm sure that many, many, many other people, not just pastors, you know, not just in churches, but I'm sure a lot of pastors felt that way, but I'm sure in many jobs, there were a lot of people who felt that way. Probably anybody who's in the front line trying to serve the public and all the mask mandates and people's different opinions about it, nurses, doctors, Oh my goodness. It was a rough time. So I'm sure there were a lot of people who were trying to figure out how do we get enough oomph to keep going and persevere and to overcome these obstacles. And one of the things I've been thinking about is just the fact that you and I started doing what we're doing here uh, about a year ago. Yeah. And we've been consistently coming at it and we don't really have a huge following at this point. We're thank, just... both, thank both of you though. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Uh, but we keep on doing it. You know, I was uh, working on something for the website in the promises in action this week. Mm -hmm. And when his verse this said that if you commit your ways to the Lord, mm -hmm. then he will make your plan succeed. And so that's what we do. We just commit our effort day after day, mm -hmm. keep putting it out, keep creating things that will be useful and one of the things that you talked about very early on is that because these are recorded, because these are written and put into a place where people can see them, it's part of the legacy. And, you know, when I think about where we are and how we could be either sneaking up on or within the end times, yeah. there's going to come a point where the Christian world that we see today is not going to be here. The rapture will take place, will be taken out of it. And there's going to be a lot of stunned people going, what just happened? I think somebody told me about this. That could have been the rapture, and I got left behind. I better get this figured out. And these are the kind of things that people can look at and understand, you know, their relationship with God and how to make it right. Very true. Now, that was the pre-tribulation viewpoint being expressed there. <laughs> there are some, just to let you know, because we were trying to be theologically accurate. There are some who would think that maybe there's a mid-trib that shows that you can actually be through a portion of the tribulation before God takes his bride home to be with him. And if that's the case, there will still be a lot of questions. I'm sure that even in that case, there might be some who would find some benefit from these recordings because they'll be looking for real answers to big questions. So we don't know when those questions will pop up or in whom and where they would even come across us or find us. But we have felt very strongly committed to enduring and to putting things out there by faith, not knowing who it's going to touch or when, 
And I think there's a lot of faith attached to that. And it, just the same thing about preachers who said, okay, I'm going to keep preaching in season and out of season. Might not be the season for a harvest yet, but there's going to come a time for a great harvest. So yeah, we just have to keep enduring. And if nobody else has gotten something from this, you and I have encouraged one another. It's encouraged me greatly to keep me in the saddle and to keep preaching in season and out of season. So if nobody else got anything from it, you and I have. Yeah, absolutely. And it's much bigger than what either of us originally envisioned. Yeah. And every day when I write something for the website, when I'm creating either a promise in action or an article or something, it touches me somewhere. And, you know, my walk is, is closer than it was, you know, last week or last month or last year. And uh, that's a good thing. No kidding. You're not kidding. I had a couple other examples of what we might call endurance. So in auto racing, you can go drag racing. You can get done in less than five seconds. Mm -hmm. Or you can get in a different type of race car and run 24 hours at Le Mans which is a major endurance race, mm -hmm. very different. My wife has a cousin who lives not too far from us. Mm -hmm. And my house sits at about 7,500 feet. You know, so we're up there a little ways. Well, his house is about 8,200 feet. Oh. And then he goes up in what they call the hills, which are really the top of the mountains, which are more about 11,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And he runs. He runs ultra marathons. <sighs> at altitude and those ultra marathons are 50 to 100 miles man and so he's got not only the endurance of that long race but it's in the mountains and there's no oxygen i mean there are times even at where we are and I've, we've been here 16 years i still get winded pretty easily again could be because i'm getting old but it could also be just because there's not as much oxygen here as there is wow. at lower altitude. Yeah. So I can't even imagine running to my mailbox and he's out doing a hundred miles. He was doing, I, I can't even tell you how many miles a week he was out in yeah. up in the trails in the high mountains day after day. You know, that's kind of more to my thinking on the endurance side, even though there are some obstacles Mm -hmm. The one that, that I see as being more of the perseverance side is coming back from an injury. Oh, uh, yeah. Again, another example from the Olympics, there was a gal who is a very, very talented skier, had won most of the races in one of the disciplines. And she took a crash and cracked her fibula, had many other injuries from this terrible fall. Uh-huh. And she came back and raced in the Olympics about a month later. Man. So not only trying to stay in shape enough to compete at that level, but doing it with injuries. Now that to me is perseverance. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, what do you think, just from your own experience, causes us as human beings to want to quit? What keeps us from enduring or persevering? Well, one of the things that immediately comes to mind is just our human frailty. You know, we have weaknesses. We, we aren't strong enough to do everything all the time, every day. Mm -hmm. But from my experience with a lot of the different business things that I've done is in many cases, it's mental. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of, of work in goal setting. And one of the things that keeps people from moving forward in a big way is their vision isn't big enough. Mm. So something comes up and it's a little bit hard and they go, well, it's not really worth it. The payoff just isn't big enough. Uh. So there's a guy out there now who's got a big following. His name is Simon Sinek. And he talks about having a big why. Mm. The why of what you're doing has to be so big mm -hmm. that no matter what, the obstacles seem really small. Mm. And I see that as a way that you're practicing building strength of will. And so mm. it's, it's mostly up here. You've got to have a big picture. It's got to be big enough so that the obstacles will look small. And then you have to build the strength yeah. of understanding how to move past the difficulties to get to a point where 
you've overcome it. And in many cases, you don't even realize it because you're just moving forward. And then you set a bigger why and a bigger goal. And I realize in my own life, looking back at the last couple of years, that most of the goals that we had originally set for ourselves got blown out of the water. So it forced us to think, okay, we need to set new goals because we have a whole new playing field now. And our goals were different. At first, we had to set simple goals. Our very first goal, we only had 72 hours from the time we found out that we were not going to be able to meet in a school. We had to come up with a goal of making our worship services available through the internet. And so we figured out how to do that through Zoom. And each new goal after that was on a brand new playing field. It was like we were starting from scratch. It was like we were planting a brand new church in a, in a sense. But there are things that stopped us from wanting to set future goals. And you're so right, because as soon as we stopped seeing something on the horizon and we weren't asking the why, we didn't have a big enough why. When I would ask, why are we doing this anyway? And we would find out that there were people out there who were desperate looking for answers because the pandemic was really hitting them in the mental health area. Then that helped us understand we have to keep doing this because we need to minister to people who are being adversely affected by the pandemic. It was so important. So yeah, you're right. I think goal setting and re-examining our purpose, our why, is really huge in keeping us moving forward, even through the tough stuff. And it, a lot of it is mental. There's a, a guy out there making the talk show circuit and promoting some of his work. His name is David Goggins. And the guy is tougher than nails. I believe he was in special forces. And if I remember correctly, he came up from a bad neighborhood, was uh, looking at possibly being in gangs and those kind of things. I think that's the, the correct story. But he went into the special forces and he learned how to be tough. And he said, when you are totally, absolutely 100% spent, when you cannot go on, when you cannot get up off the floor, mm -hmm. you're really about 60% done. There's a whole nother segment. If you will just get past your brain, there's a whole nother segment of what you can do that you're not even aware of. And if you give up after 60%, then you're missing the very best because it comes after you get up off the floor and get into that 40% that you didn't even know existed. And that seems to be a lot of what we see when we're looking at some of the apostles who persevered through some real serious persecution too. I, I think of the apostle Paul for one, and he just kept getting up. I mean, you read in some of the, uh, the New Testament passages where he talks about the things that he endured for the sake of Christ. And he says, but that's okay. They were momentary light afflictions. I don't think of those things as being very momentary or light, because when you're in the middle of being put in prison or when you're in the middle of a shipwreck and you're stuck on an island somewhere and some of the things that had happened to him good night man those are really that would be enough for so many people to say nope i hereby recant everything that i was saying because i'm tired of hurting so badly yeah but i mean I, he was beaten a number of times as well a shipwreck being bitten by snakes and and yeah. so many things that would nor knock down a, a normal person and he goes, eh, yeah. it's nothing. That's right. We're working real hard, but when we get cursed, we'll just bless them back. And when we're persecuted, we'll endure it. And when we're slandered, we'll just answer back kindly. How could he do that? Because he had the bigger why. He knew about the kingdom of God and the eternal ramifications of what he was doing. And because Christ gave up everything for him, he thought, yeah, I can reach down and find that extra 40% that's still down in there somewhere. And it's not like we just see this in the New Testament. I mean, mm -hmm. the Psalms are filled, especially some of the, the writings of David, yeah. talking about being down but not giving up. Those character qualities of God with his love and kindness, those are things that endure forever. Yeah, you know, He can't be unloving towards us. Right, And this gives us an idea of how we should approach life as well. That's very true. And I think God, for me, has given me brothers in arms, uh, you included, who came along at just the right time so that you could remind me or at least engage in a conversation about the Bible, which reminds me where our real strength comes from. 
because God's loving kindness is new every morning. His faithfulness is made new every day. He doesn't give up on us. He still loves us. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Those reminders keep me getting up, picking myself up out, out of the dust, brushing myself off and moving forward for another week. And I saw that with a pastor's prayer group that we had going, and we are still doing that every month now. It started because we needed some people in the trenches who are also experiencing the same stuff to pray for one another. And we did that. We were meeting almost monthly. Some months we couldn't for one reason or another, but probably 10 times a year for the last two years we have met. It was like just knowing that somebody else is facing the same stuff makes you feel like I'm not alone in this fight. And that alone gives me strength. Like my dad coming up alongside me to help rake leaves, just knowing that somebody else is there with me gives me strength to keep taking the next step forward. And it helps me re-examine my goals because I think, okay, they've got the same why that I do. Why are we doing this? Because people's lives are at stake. Their eternal life is at stake. So we have to keep doing this. Yeah, that always reminds me of, you know, in our witnessing to other people, we don't know everyone who's, whose name's written in the book of life. We don't know at what point their heart is going to be softened that they're going to be able to accept the gospel. Right. All we can do is keep moving on, keep enduring, in some cases persevering if they're kind of uh, cantankerous and we have to yeah. uh, witness in a way that is overcoming their obstacles, uh, real or imagined. Mm -hmm. And God hasn't given up on them, and we shouldn't either. We should be right in that fight all the time, you know, calling their name before the Lord and persisting, knocking on his door saying, this person needs you, mm -hmm. work on them. I'm going to be here to be part of that process, and I'm willing to commit part of my life to you know, their salvation, to their discipleship, but you're going to have to do the work because it's only through the Holy Spirit that someone's heart is softened. And therefore, all we can do is be available. But that may take a long time. You're not kidding. Sometimes it will. Often it will. Uh, God gave me a real wonderful booster shot of encouragement just uh, a few weeks ago. There was a young lady on Facebook who saw one of our posts. And she said, uh, I'm not sure that you would remember me or not, but my name is such and such. And you were my pastor back at this other church. So we're talking over 20 years. And she's a young lady now. She has a child of her own. And I said, oh, of course I do. And I remembered her well because she had had a traumatic experience as a child. We visited her in the hospital. Never forget her. Sweet family. And she said something that just melted my heart. She goes, oh, well, thank you for remembering me. I appreciate that. She said, you should know that it was you and your preaching and your wife and her love for the church that was the reason that I decided to follow Christ. That just made me sit there and just about water up, you know, because <laughs> we don't get to hear that very often. And to hear that that many years later from somebody that we had not had anything to do with for quite some time, that was a huge thing. And I kind of, I kind of get the impression that that's sort of what Jesus was talking about. When you've done it to the least of these, my little ones, you've done it unto me so that when we get into heaven and we start to become rewarded, they'll say, great, you're going to get this reward. And they'll say, how come? They'll say, because you did this to Jesus. And I'll say, I don't remember when I did that. And he says, oh, let me show you. <laughs> so we got to keep persisting, not knowing what those rewards may look like, but God knows what they look like and he'll show them to us one day, but we may not. Well, we probably won't see a lot of them on this planet. In fact. Yeah. You know, I look at that and, and I see how our efforts create the reward, but it's not necessarily something that God will give us once we're there. I'm sure that he will. Right. But a good portion of that reward are going to be those souls that we touched. Yes. And, and that is such a bigger reward because now we can spend eternity with them in paradise without any of the sin nature that would hinder uh, the right kind of relationship that we can now have forever. Yeah, precisely. We had a good discussion about rewards from Romans chapter two in our growth encounter at our church. It's a Bible study just last week. And it sounds in chapter two, a little bit like Paul saying that we need to be working for those rewards, but you know that all the rest of his writings, it's all about grace. It's God's grace. And that we appropriate that by faith. We don't do it through works. Otherwise we would boast about it, but there is a 
component of doing these good works that we were created to do in advance because we are saved, not to get saved. And that's very clear. He makes that very clear, especially in the book of Romans later on. And yet we do know that there will be rewards and we're not working for our glory. We're working for God's glory and for the eternal life of others who will finally take that step of faith. And it's like you're saying, that will be the greatest reward just to see somebody's face to say, oh, you're here, you made it. And they'll say, yes, and you were a part of that process. Wow, what a reward. And you're right. So we're not earning it like we're earning some race in the Olympics where they're going to give us a gold medal. We're just trying to give God glory and point people to him. And then the natural outgrowth of that is going to be such a wonderful sense of joy when we see that others are there. Yeah, when I wrote... No Ordinary Day, which is a play about the Bema Seat Judgment, mm -hmm. in the process of the protagonist seeing what happens at that judgment, we get a picture of the spiritual generations that yeah. develop as we touch someone, and their life is impacted by others, and then they make their decision. And then they reach others, and those people reach others, and generation after spiritual generation, yeah. on and on down through time, we can see how important it is that we impact those people who are around us for Christ, yeah. because we never know what's going to happen. And in yeah. one of the skits I wrote, a young lady is killed in an accident, and she goes up to heaven and the gatekeeper is talking to her about what happens because of her memorial service. Oh, wow. And how <laughs> one of the stoner kids yeah. finds Jesus and ends up being an evangelist, wow. speaking to hundreds of thousands of people in South America because of the impact of her life and the impact of her death. Wow. That's and significant. I see that as a very real a depiction of what happens in the spiritual life because we don't see around those corners but god does he can take the worst things you know all things work together even the horrible things they work together for good for those of us who are called according to his purpose and those are the things that we will be able to enjoy once we get there and see how it all played out no kidding i was just talking with a friend of mine last week and your story about that reminded me of this he and I had a good lengthy conversation. Turns out that he and I both know the same person whose son in high school, uh, good at everything he did. He loved people. He was a successful athlete. And just a few weeks before his graduation, he was killed in a head-on car accident. It was a horrible, horrible tragedy. And uh, at his funeral, however, there were so many positive things said, not just about his life, but about his eternal life and how people can appropriate that grace that God openly offers to everybody who would place their faith in him. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful that when we get to heaven, we can see a whole bunch of people that started that process of taking a step of faith because of what they, they heard at his funeral, and that God could use something so horrifically tragic and still be able to find a way to turn it into some sort of a redemptive event. That's the kind of God that I see in Scripture. And what a joy for that young man yeah. to say, you know, this was horrible. I had a great life planned out ahead of me, and it was cut short. And yet, look how many people are here yeah. because of that, that incident that, okay. that was terrible. Mm -hmm. But in their lives, it was amazing. Uh, and that's the stuff we can't see, which is why we need the Bible. <laughs> To remember that there's this great cloud of witnesses, and they will help us throw off everything that hinders, because we're thinking, okay, everything that God has shown us through his word lets us know that we can't see the picture that he is looking at. And there's a whole great cloud of witnesses in heaven who they do understand all that. So being aware of them, as Paul would say, I think uh, Paul probably wrote Hebrew. Some people think it was Luke. There, there could be a good debate about that. But we need to throw off anything that hinders us and the sin in us that would keep entangling us to keep us from moving forward. And then he says, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus as the ultimate goal. That's the finish line, Jesus. 
the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. That's so that's good. A, that's a pretty big why. It's a huge why. <laughs> and, and it helps us keep our perspective. You know, we talked yeah. about if your why isn't big enough, it's easy to quit. But when your why is the creator of the universe mm -hmm. and his plan and his big picture, yeah. there's, there's no way we can stop. That's you know, whether we need to endure or whether we need to persevere, it doesn't matter because that big picture why is so immense and so necessary and we get to be a part of it. He didn't have to do it that way. He didn't. You know, he could have said, oh, here's the elect. They're good to go. Mm -hmm. Let's go into heaven and, and we'll call it good. Yeah. But no, we, yeah. we work through all of this stuff to prepare ourselves for what's coming after. Yeah. And if we do it right, there will be a great reward, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily what we work for, mm -mm. but it is the result of our faithfulness which mimics his faithfulness. Yeah. And therefore, we can endure, we can persevere, we can keep moving every day and run the race until it's done. Yeah. And then we will see how it all fits together. Yeah, there's a real joy in that. And I mean, even Christ counted it joy as he went to the cross, it says that in Hebrews 2, that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. There, there is a joy set before us a good pastor friend of mine texted me one day. He just felt prompted, I'm sure, by the Holy Spirit. And he said, I just wanted to know I'm thinking of you and praying for you today, my friend. And I said, oh, man, this was so well-timed. I needed that word. Thank you for that. And he said, isn't it a privilege to be a part of what God is doing? And I had not thought about that that particular day because I was starting to get kind of down in the dumps. And I thought, well, he's right, though. It is a privilege because for Christ to see the joy that awaited him, that would allow him, because of his great why, to go through what he did on, for my sake, then I can know that I can keep persevering and I can keep enduring for the sake of Christ. For him, it was for the sake of the cross. For me, it's for the sake of Christ. And I know that he's got something wonderful in store for me, but I just need to keep persisting and keep trusting him. He'll bring the reward. Yeah, you know, when we look at that obstacle, the cross, and see what happened the night before, he didn't want to go through that. No. He, he said, if there is any other way, let's try that. Yeah. And when he didn't get the answer, he said, okay, we're going to go to the cross. All of these people need it. Mm -hmm. Because if not, then they are going to perish in their sin. But if I go through this, then I can solve that problem. Yeah, it's incredible. And I'm thinking about those moms who've been trying to persevere through home learning, virtual learning with their children, and then moving into hybrid, and then the kids keep getting kicked back out of school and back into the home again because of COVID cases. The nurses who are just beyond exhausted trying to care for people who may or may not have cared for themselves and who may or may not be grateful for the care they're receiving. I'm, I'm thinking about the pastors, like the guy, one of them in our group who was really struggling just a few weeks ago. And he said, I'm not sure if this is the church for me. I may be looking for another church because the, the people just don't seem to be responding right now to my ministry. I mean, we could think of so many others who would be approaching that exhaustion and they're down for the count. They feel like they're a swimmer who's going under for the third time and they just don't know if they've got enough mental or or emotional strength to keep it going. I'm thinking about all those people, and I'm thinking, I'm so grateful that through God's word, and especially through Jesus and his example, that we can encourage them to say, don't give up. <laughs> Hang in there. Hang in there just a little bit longer. Keep it up, because you don't know what God's doing through your perseverance right now. Somebody may be watching you persevere, and even that will become a witness to them. They'll say, wow, I decided to keep going because I saw you keep going. We don't know, but people are watching us. So I'm thinking about those people, and I think it would be good for us to be able to pray for those people who are struggling and just pray for God to give them a little extra booster shot of encouragement to keep going right now. Yeah, and then we may also want to pray for those who may have thought, you know, I, I see that there's this plan, and I'm not part of it. 
Yeah. You know, I I know who Christ is. I know what He's done, mm -hmm. but I've never appropriated that into my personal life. So we might do a two part prayer today, like we did last week. I think that sounds like a great idea. Why don't I dive in and I'll start a prayer? Okay. Very good. Father, I do pray with empathy for anybody who may be feeling that uh, sense of discouragement right now. And they're just, they've been in entertaining the idea of just quitting whatever it is they've been facing because they just don't have the oomph. And I pray that through your Holy Spirit right now, in this moment, you will give them a sense that they are not alone in their struggle, that other people have overcome obstacles in persevering. And I pray that you'll just give them a sense of encouragement that will help them endure and to persevere today, knowing that you can bring such good out of their perseverance that we may not be able to see the effect of that yet, but that because of their commitment, their steadfastness, that you're going to bring some wonderful fruit and that when it is revealed, it's going to become a real reward to them. So even though we can't see those rewards immediately, I pray that you will dangle those rewards out there as we fix our eyes on Jesus, who considered it even a joy set before him to endure the cross. What an incredible thing. Thank you for doing that for us. And thank you for allowing us to be a part, the, the privilege of being a part of your work. May we encourage each other and other people today. I pray that we will be encouragers so that somebody else may be boosted by our encouragement so that they won't give up. And as Rick mentioned, there may be some who would be in a situation where they think, I just need to start that journey. I'm so discouraged right now because I don't have this faith that they keep talking about. I don't have a relationship with Christ. And I pray that they would take that step of faith and say, God, I need you. And that's the big first step is for them to admit that they can't do it on their own that they're a sinner who can't atone for their own sin. There's somebody who can't make their own way in this world. They can't be smart enough or steadfast enough to overcome the obstacles that, that lie ahead of them. So they need to walk hand in hand with Christ. And may they take that step of faith and reach out to you and say, God, I need you. Be the Lord of my life. I want to walk with Christ. I want to be a, a Christ follower, a Christian and I want to be a part of the family so that I know I'm not alone because there are many, many other people who are on this journey too, and they struggle just like I do. But together, we help each other out so that the struggle doesn't seem as big. I pray that they will have done that. And if they have reached out to you and said that prayer to say, God, save me, forgive me, I pray that they will sense that joy that floods into us as we open ourselves up to you. And I pray that they will take that next step, which is to just tell somebody about what decision they've made so that they can rejoice with them and encourage them and help them take next steps in their journey. And for all these things, we're so grateful. Thank you for not giving up when you could have for our benefit. May we not give up for other people's benefit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Yeah, and that's uh, just encouraging to me just to talk through some of these things and reaffirm how important it is to have that big goal to be working daily towards seeing you know, what our little part of it is and creating a message that points people to Christ. Amen to that. And fellow theologians, I've got a product that is on the website for Monday Afternoon Theologians that will encourage you, and it may give you something to read that would take your mind off the terrible things that we see in the news, and it's Rick's new book, Spiritual, Spiritual Superheroes. Superheroes. He just finished it very recently, and we're going to put a link in the description to this podcast so that you can find that. It's all about how God who gifts this unique group of people with spiritual superpowers, so to speak, turns them into spiritual superheroes. Not because they are super, but because Christ in them is super and it's some fun scenarios. So you're going to want to get a hold of Rick's book. And uh, we'll also post in that description how you can get it for 50% off. And I'm grateful to be able to share that with you because I uh, am excited that more and more people can read that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be a huge encouragement as well. It should be. We talk about a lot of issues that are going on around the, the world today and how when we seek God or when the 
characters seek God, mm -hmm. they see some real results. And uh, some of them may not be expected. And some of them can be really encouraging. Yeah. I, I still I chuckle every time I think about it, about one person that says, do you speak Korean? They go, I will in a few minutes. <laughs> 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 Something like that. I, it's just, there's some fun stuff in there, folks. You're going to love it. And there's a good, strong chance for somebody that would be reading it for the first time to find out what it means to take that step of faith and to become a Christ follower. So yeah, there's, can... there's one segment where one of the characters walks through the gospel with a young lady yep. in no uncertain terms and yeah. gives her an invitation. And so even though we, we walk around it in a couple of places, we do have a very strong, this is the gospel message in there. So that if you're not sure how to share your faith, here's a way you can look into it. Yep. Which means I'm, I'm kind of given the pitch here because I think it could be a useful tool. If you know somebody who loves fiction, then you might be able to buy that for them as a gift and just send it to them because it comes in PDF format. So it'd be easy to send it to them. So think about that. That'd be one way for you to share your faith too. Absolutely. And hope you'll avail yourself to other resources that are on the website there. It's uh, Monday afternoon theologians.podia, P O D I A dot com. And there are some new t shirts that can uh, display different things that might start a spiritual conversation with other people. And that's just one more low key way for people to share their faith because some people might walk up and say, that's interesting. That's a definition of this word. I don't think I'm familiar with that word. What is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we put a couple of uh, those big theological words out there just in the last few days, and those should be fun. And if you go right at the top, it says how you can help us share the gospel. Uh, go to that page, look for a merch link, and you'll see where those are. Yeah. Um, some of them are, are kind of fun there. Again, there can be a little bit of humor in it. Uh, and there may be some of those words that you're not familiar with. There's some of those big theological words that we try to break down into some smaller pieces so they're easier to handle. Right. Yeah. And all this stuff, we don't, we don't make a ton off of any of these things. We're doing it just to make enough money to keep the website going, really, at this point in our ministry. And we're grateful for you for looking for opportunities to share your faith. And we pray that you'll be encouraged and uh, inspired by some of the things that we have put out there on the website, but also in these YouTube videos. And I, I hope that you'll tell a friend because we want the good word to, to be spread far and wide because Jesus, good love and eternal life is for everybody. And we want as many people as possible to hear it and have the ability to respond to it if they can. And that's one of the reasons another set of the shirts are just scripture. Yeah. Because God says his word will not return void. If you wear it around your sphere of influence, you may make an impact that you don't even know about. That's right. Yep. So hope you'll check out that website. And thank you for being an encouragement to us by just hanging in there with us and continuing to listen to these podcasts. We appreciate that very much as well. And we do hope that you will join us, fellow theologians, next week for another episode of Monday, Monday Afternoon, Afternoon Theologians. 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 Theologians.